Hey, it's Joel. It looks like the Obsidian is done printing. Let's power this off and talk about the final update that I'm going to give you on the channel. When I last saw you, we talked about the Obsidian and how it was printing my Maker Coin. Michael showed off the Benchy. Both looked decent for a printer that was going to debut for $99, $49 early birds on Kickstarter. When I first released my video, when Michael was in my garage, we talked about the printer being normally $99 and me having the $149 version, this being the V3 hardware prototype. The problem was when I released the video, I caught crazy amounts of flack because people said, you're clickbait, this is not a $99 printer, the shipping is outrageous. Obviously when I had Michael here, we didn't talk about the shipping and the Kickstarter wasn't live, so I had no idea what the shipping involved, but for that, I know Michael did actually post a few updates on the Kickstarter campaign, and I highly suggest you go take a look at those. The link, of course, is down in the description. Of course, my Maker Coin and the Benchy weren't the only models that I printed. You can see that there's a model currently on the Obsidian, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit. The first one I want to talk about is Faceless from Fantasy Graph. This is a wonderful model. It's very difficult to print because the sword and the feet start at the base, they then meet up. And then off of the sword handles come the hands that meet up with the shoulders and the body. And then the model prints. And it's done. The issue is, the obsidian, when printing this, knocked over this arm. And that's why this faceless is missing a right arm. In fact, when I was at work, I texted my wife and my assistant Josh. And I said, hey, how's the model doing? And both of them, from two angles, sent me a picture of this model completed but missing the right arm. It actually shifted a little bit. It still looks great, but the printer did knock over the arm. Once I got home from work, I did try it again. And the arm stayed on. This is great. This is a wonderful model. I printed using Cura 2.5. This is on the Obsidian, so the temp of the filament was 215. No heated bed. It printed at 45 millimeters per second. Other than a little bit of wisps of filament not correctly dialed in. It looks pretty good. I'd say this is a quality model. The surface finish is fantastic. Then I tried the Big King model, which is a model from Devin over at Make Anything. He had the original V2 hardware prototype. We took the SD card out of that when Michael was here, put it in this, and then I tried printing it. And it's this glorious mishmash of failure and plastic spaghetti. Oh, it's, it's wonderful in its terribleness. Unfortunately, again, this printer knocked over a part of the model while it was printing, which resulted in failure. I did try to print it again, and that's what's on the build plate right here. The build plate's removable, which is nice. You can see that the model did complete. There are some wisps of plastic in between all of the parts of the model, but the problem is it did knock over another bit. So this part of the model here is not attached, and it comes off easily. So here's my final thoughts on this prototype of the Obsidian. It's, a, it's the V3 prototype. I think that as a prototype, it's a decent machine. It leaves a lot to be desired, but let's hope that V4 is good and then the V5 hardware prototype that Michael talked about shipping is what, in fact, you get in your hands and it's better. I found that leveling the build plate was extremely difficult and the Z axis uh, screw in the back isn't the easiest thing to dial in. I think it's an interesting machine. I like the fact that it's low priced and I like the fact that it can get more people into 3D printing. I think that the shipping charges that they initially offered on the Kickstarter were a bit outrageous and I agree with a lot of you who left comments on the previous videos and I'm glad that Michael and his crew addressed that in some Kickstarter updates. And again, the link is down in the description. So what's next from here? Well, this Obsidian is going to go back to Michael. I may end up reviewing a final hardware prototype once all Kickstarter backers have been fulfilled. As it stands right now, this is a hardware prototype, like I said, is decent, but I would not buy this machine and I wouldn't give this machine to someone. I think that it still requires a few refinements in order to be better. It does print reasonably well, it does incur some failures, and the failures happen more often than not. I'm not gonna spend time troubleshooting because it is a hardware prototype, and I'm gonna give it back to Michael. And then once the uh, V5 hardware comes out, all the Kickstarter backers are fulfilled, then I'll get a machine, and I'll get you my thoughts on that. Well, for now, why don't you let me know what you think? I mean, it, it does a decent job, it's just, it needs some refinement, and I think that, 
I think that it's, it's going to be okay. I think. It's still so low priced that it's hard to dismiss it. And I think it prints well enough, and it's from someone who has a proven track record, that it has a chance of being very successful. We just have to wait to find out. Well, there we go. That's my thoughts on the V3 hardware of the Obsidian 3D printer. You see the models out here. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. A big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com. And a big thanks to everybody that lets the ads play or watches me via YouTube Red. Finally, don't forget to like each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.